Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group Weekly Update for the week ending May the 20th, 2022. Uh, the year's just flying by already. Uh, the real play uh, over this whole year really has been uh, initially the first quarter uh, turned out to be, you know, it's a total return plays. Uh, as uh, things have developed, uh, as you can tell in uh, Muhammad Al Arian's uh, uh, quote of the week uh, down below, uh, things have, uh, the market has shifted, okay? So uh, those have even, uh, you know, taken a real beating now. What has played through uh, and I'll t has done very well is commodities, obviously, uh, you know, because of the inflation and everything. And so right now, energy uh, on a one month has been, the sector that has held on, excuse me, the best, but uh, you essentially got, uh, you know, energy and all of these at this point on, on, on rotational, relative rotational graph are weakening, okay, right now. But uh, overall, right now, you've got energy, consumer non-cyclical, non uh, utilities, and then cash proxies. Uh, those are the, those are the top, uh, top four uh, that are that are doing that are doing well above average. Uh, that if we were in the market, if we had some kind of a trend to go with that was acceptable, that would be okay for new positions. But let me tell you about why. Let me show you why that uh, that that the commodities are such a difficult play uh, to r reconcile here because of the risk involved. Okay, if you look at this, so. This is the top four. I took uh, the top four out of uh, these. These just happen to be uh, energy sectors, but I took the top four performers uh, uh, in terms of um, of commodities uh, right now, uh, and and uh, their uh, ETFs that uh, are taking the best of, of the best along there. Individually, any one of these would be more volatile and actually perform higher. But these are equal weighted, and we brought them down here. Uh, um, to to do a, a little bit of uh, uh, illustration about why it's so difficult to play in this. So um, if you look at this movement here, up up and down as we go, that's a tremendous amount of volatility. This blue line is the Bloomberg Commodity Index. So it's just like that would be the S and P 500 equivalent of uh, commodities. And uh, as you can see, the bottom the bottom line here, this orange line, is the S and P 500. So the, it, it's virtually uh, non-correlated with uh, commodities, uh, and, and especially these commodities. Uh, they just they move. As a matter of fact, if anything, they move contra. So the more to the point is that while well, the S and P is down almost eighteen percent through yesterday, this doesn't have uh, today's close in it. Uh, but through through yesterday, which would have been uh, Thursday, September, uh, May the nineteenth, these commodities. We're closing up at 76 and a half. And you're like, wow, I would really like to have had a piece of that. But along the way, you have to be willing uh, at the time that you're going through this from between March the 8th and March the 10th. You don't have the benefit of all of that, all of that movement to the right uh, at your disposal. And so just like the equities markets, uh, you don't know when that bottom is going to hit. You just uh, it, it just keeps sliding. And that's a pretty big move. From 51, uh, almost 52 percent down to 35 percent. So that's a 17 uh, percent move in like three, two, three days there. And and this is the this is the thing. So this is why it's very difficult because of this risk involved to take people's uh, uh, re retirement money and and invest in that. So this has to be a piece of your portfolio that is open for gamesmanship. Okay, as you go. I don't want to get too wonky with you on this, but just look at the a couple of points here, to just and, and we'll close this out and move on. The total return, yes, indeed, seventy six and a half percent, but the S and P five hundred down seventeen point six eight percent on an annualized total return over three hundred and forty four percent as long as it lasts. Okay, with these commodity plays, while the S and P right now would be if it kept going this rate would be down forty percent. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, right now, your standard deviation or risk, okay, as it's as it's conventionally known for the commodities, is 157 percent higher than that of the S and P. So, if the S and P on a normal two standard deviations is 18 percent, the uh, these just top four commodity performers right now 
uh, are, are 150 times greater than that risk, that volatility, that movement. So for that reason alone, you see that uh, if the S&P just goes down, uh, if the Bloomberg commodity goes down 1%, the S and P goes down set. If we went down one dollar, a one one percent, the S and P goes down zero point one seven, seventeen cents, or point one seven for every one point down that the Bloomberg Commodity Index goes, and this goes down one point five three. So that right there, uh, it reinforces the point on the standard deviation, and this is why that. Uh, we don't put big pieces of people, especially people that are very risk averse or don't have enough wherewithal to play. This is why we have to really throttle this down to the extent that they have any exposure in this market at all. Okay, so getting back then and looking for uh, you know some inclination of, of uh, what may be looking like uh, for the future then right now uh, for this quarter. Then the next earnings reports right now it looks like agribusiness through the summer uh, is is uh, you know somewhat attractive uh, place to be, and, uh, and consumer staples has really moved out of favor with most analysts. Uh, next comes up uh, probably a very attractive uh, uh, scenario would be uh, consumer autos, tires, anything like that through the summer. So auto retail, automotive manufacturers, tires and rubber auto parts and equipment distributors. Then we get back into energy uh, throughout the uh, throughout the next quarter. Uh, essentially here we were ta we're talking about the end of Q2 into uh, Q3. Okay, uh, so you've got oil uh, exploration and production, alternative energy sources, uh, miscellaneous oil and gas and oil and gas integrated. Um, and then uh, back into banks and thrifts as uh, interest rates continue to go up and a little bit of REITs uh, on that. And then uh, also that we have our eye on would be metal fabrication, pollution control, conglomerates, transports, so railroads and trucking. And uh, then back uh, to computer office equipment and some electric semi electronic semiconductors and everything. If uh, the, and I, I'm, I'm just tossing this in, this is not really what analysts say, but it, 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 to my mind, this would have something to do with uh, supply chains as well. The China has been shut down. They remain shut down, and that's been a problem for everybody. Containers and glass and steel is something to keep your eyes on as we get through uh, into uh, Q3. And then uh, non-ferrous metals, you know, uh, gold, aluminum, those types of uh, uh, metals. And then uh, communications, telco equipment uh, is, is pretty much uh, going to round out the list there. So... This is uh, why it's it's been difficult. All right, so the uh, the S and P has come down. Uh, capitulation is at hand, and now moved in uh, this afternoon into bear territory, and uh, along with the Nasdaq, which has been there for a while, bonds have been in bear market since uh, last October of 2021. So. Uh, this this is the issue, and this is why we focus on where we're at today. So the money that is to be made is a risky proposition. So sitting on a lot of cash, uh, waiting for things to turn around, we're uh, anticipating good news uh, very soon and, and, and market uh, capitulation. Volatility, we would have liked to have seen spike along with all the other experts out there, uh, but uh, it has fallen back down before, below 30. And, uh, you know, the issue now is becoming whether we, the economy is strong, but it's starting to weaken. And the issue then is whether or not uh, we move towards the uh, the horrible S word, stagflation, or just um, a slowdown and somehow avoid the recession uh, next year. So that's where we're at right now. But the good news is, is that there are places to make money and we are taking advantage of those, of those moves, especially now that we're lower with bu uh, buffered downside protection, plays that have barriers on them. Of course, uh, the safe money uh, parts of your portfolio are, are doing increasingly better as time goes by uh, and, and uh, participation rates, cap rates continue to increase. So there's room to be happy about situations as they go. Uh, sure, we've got a lot ahead of us uh, to overcome, but uh, uh, that's the uh, striving in life. And uh, there's a lot of people that have it a lot worse. So meanwhile, until next week, stay happy. Studies show that it's the key to longevity.